everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another fun card to share, and this one is a water-filled card. So the idea, or the inspiration for this, has come from an old Lawn Fawn video that they done. They called theirs a water-filled shaker card, so you can add glitter and sparkle and all kinds of things inside it if you want to. I've kept mine plain and simple for this tutorial. You can also use, like, hand gel, any kind of thicker gels and you can add colour to them as well. So it's a really, really fun card to make. You can see there just all the movement to it. You can squidge it around. The fact that it's got all these kind of bubbles, I just think just really works great with this wonderful stamp set using these otters. Again, I'll share all that with you in a moment. It's on a six by six card. Even when you stand it up, it looks great. So if I just kind of bring it on a side there, you can see how all that water settles on the bottom there and it looks like they're kind of floating and playing in the water and the fish are kind of jumping out so like I said this is just water with some blue colouring which I'll show you again in a moment but and when it's down flat you can kind of like poke it around and squidge it around and it's yeah it's really really fun I thoroughly enjoyed this one so let me show you how I made it. Okay, so this is what I've used for today's card. So this is the stamp set, Creative Stamps, and it's utterly fabulous. They're really nice photopolymer stamps, and they're a really good price as well. So as always, I will link this below. Really nice to colour. And I've already done those, and I will add in shortly a quick little video, because this time I used my Arteza watercolours. So it's just my little palette there, and they're just super cute. And they're my oh, these pieces here which are part of the fern border I've mentioned this lots of times but they work really well as seaweed or in this case they look like all of the you know the riverbed plants that grow and kind of when you see like the flow of the stream they kind of all kind of flow with it when it's like a really clear water it looks really nice so I that's what I've kind of gone for with this so I've done all of those and then I distressed all of the edges I bring one up here that you can see a little bit better for example there just distressed all the edges there using my makeup brushes and the colours I have used is the pine needles and mowed lawn and then I went on the very tips with the vintage photo okay so that's a nice kind of combination for distressing gone through those then for this actual pocket piece I've used these ziplock it's tidy z or tidy z and these were from biology they may well be in places like the pound shop, but I did, I mean, I end up sealing mine with my fuse tool, so it doesn't really matter which ones you go for, but if you don't shrink it down in size like I'm doing, then you'll want something that has a strong, you know, zip lock. So if I bring these ones in here, I found these ones were really good, and when I tested them with the water, nothing came out of them, and also I then removed that piece so you don't have the bulk, but you'll need to, it does come off, there we go. So now that's obviously sealed, nothing will come out of that. I tested it myself, but you're not really gonna make a card that big, and that's when I thought, well, I'm gonna have to use the fuse tool to shrink it down. Now you can fold over the sides like this, but then you're gonna have a bit of bulk, so you're gonna have to look at then adding foam and how you're gonna kind of hide that, okay? So there are ways around it, have a little, you know, think about it and stuff, what you might wanna do, but it, you can make it work. However, if you have the fuse tool, then it's going to make life much, much easier. So here is my pocket. Now I've had this hanging for about four weeks because I wanted to be 100% sure that this liquid is not going to come out. So two of the sides of the original 
of the, the bag, so for example here and here, and then with my fuse tool I went up here and here and I'm going to do that on camera and show you how to do it. Now my colour there for my water, I just used this here, this is the Imagination Crafts and this is the light blue spray ink paint, but you can put anything in there. You can go in with, say this was like a blue colour, and you could actually put that inside your bag. Open this one, like so. If I go in there with my actual ink pad, and just kind of spread that around on the bottom, like so. Can't really see it there. And then I used my spray bottle, and it's, it's kind of actually how much you put in. I haven't gone too crazy because I want to see the bubbles and I want you to be able to push it. And I'm also putting stuff behind this, so I want you to be able to see that. But now if I seal that up, I'm gonna just, I know it won't leak, but I don't wanna risk any of the brown going on anything. But now, that's by just dabbing that. So you can get any color you want, okay? Brown though looks awful now. <laughs> but just to give you an example, okay? And that is gonna hold in there. So depending on how big your pocket is will depend on how much you're actually going to add in and whether you're going to have a background or whatever. Okay, so I am using a 6x6 card base. So I have that here. Okay, so it's all ready to go. And then I have this piece here, which is 5 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters. And then I have this frame. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where this is from. I want to say it's a My Favourite Things because I think it's one of their dy dynamic sets. I actually messed up a lot of my dies and I'm still trying to sort them through and I believe this came with a little perforated pocket so again I will have a look and see if I can find it for you but the reason I like this one is because it gives you this lovely scallop frame inside so first of all you want to choose this is going to be our piece of paper that goes on the top and then this is going to go behind so I wanted a frame that was going to cover this space okay bring that up a bit there Okay, like so. So I'm gonna run this through and then I can talk you through more and you can kind of decide then what you're gonna use. Okay, so you can tell I haven't used this for a long time because it does just give you a frame. <laughs> it's actually now cut that out. I thought it was gonna, I don't know, for some reason, yeah, I thought it was just the inside cutting line but there's actually an outer one as well. So I could try and put that back in there but I'm not going to. So hopefully this square, because I'm going to show you how to do it, but I do want to keep this one because I know, yeah, it's going to feel, it's still going to cover it perfectly. So now you can see what I've done. I think I'm going to have this as a top folding card, but that will go over there. And we're going to stick all this down with some strong double-sided tape. So we're going to seal those edges even more so. And then that is going to go over there. And I'm going to start building everything up. It's going to be foam adhesive. I'm also going to do a blue line underneath here because I want to keep this background behind this piece white, but I want to have a frame of blue here so that you can see this white frame on top, okay? So to create your little pocket before we start assembling it, because actually the card's very easy, it's just getting this piece and you want to be 100% sure that this is going to hold your liquid and not leak. So my fuse tool, make sure you get it very, very hot. You know, I've had mine on now for probably about 15 minutes, so it is very, very warm. Now make sure you've got a good surface because I totally forgot that this isn't heat proof and I have actually, good job it's on this line, but I've actually gone into that line, I've melted some of my board, but you can't really notice it, but there is a track there of melted um, mats. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, I've just got this wooden piece here. It's a bit of board. Now the reason I use it is because it's on an angle. So it's like a bingo board. So it's got this piece here. And it means that when I go to seal the top, the water will all run down to the bottom. So it's really easy for me to use. So. You want to decide how big you're going to have your piece and I'm using my measurement on my fuse little ruler here and I want to come along to grab a pen so I want to come in four inches so that's going to be about there okay so I just made a marker on there and then using this I can then you want to get obviously try and get yours as straight as possible like so okay there we go then this is very hot. Now I've got the point um, nib on this. You also get the rotary, put like perforation one. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it perforates so much. It's more for pocket letters, so you can make like an A an A4 pocket into lots of little pockets. So um, again, those of you that have got it will know. But it's really handy for these kind of things. So then I'm just going to go as high as possible, really. And because this is very hot and it's a thin plastic, it pretty much seals straight away. If you haven't got it hot enough, you will see the plastic not kind of melting instantly. 
I, I know that's melted but I'm just going over it again just to double check everything is sealed. Now because I'm adding water into this what I did do, so now if I lift that up there we go, so now I have two pockets, I have this little pocket on this side and I have this pocket on this side. Okay then what I would do is do a test, so I'm going to now just cut the top of this off just so it's a bit easier for you guys to see and I'm going to just grab some normal water from my spray bottle and already I can see it's not leaking okay so you can see now that little this is all what we just sealed with that heat tool and I can run the water along there oh that was because I oh gosh quick get that away get away from my fish okay the only reason that water come out is because it came out the top here not because of the seal okay so I'm happy that that's all in place and I'm going to add some blue in just so you can see for the camera because I'm going to use that one that I've already done because I'm happy that I've, I've left that kind of hanging and I would say just to do that just to be a hundred percent you know maybe hang it upside down for a couple of hours and come back to it just so you can be yeah sure that nothing's gonna seep out okay so again I can just run it along there a little bit oh now it's just starting to drip out of that corner piece so you can still go into this when it's wet and this is where the board on an angle comes in handy. So now I'm just going to come up with my fuse tool again. I'm going to come back on the sideways. So see all the water now just tips off to the edge. So I just found it to be a bit easier. Now if you do have smaller little zip locks, then perfect. You know, that's going to be, you know, even better. But I don't. And I don't want to spend the money on them because this isn't something I make all the time. So I'm just coming back over that again just to reseal the end there. I know. Can you see the plastic that's come off the end there? Again, that will all come away. You get a little thing here to rest it on as well. Okay. So let's try again. Yeah, see, that's fine now. Yeah, and squeeze it a little bit, make sure it's all okay. And that was the little dot from before. But yeah. And that's how I done it, and that's how I got this one. Okay, I mean nothing's coming out of that, like I said I've had it hanging for ages, and then you go along the top and just seal off that, so I'll just roughly go along this. So yeah, if you've got smaller zip locks and they're going to fit your card size then perfect. I know that we are memory keepers do have matching pieces to go with this, but you can also buy them cheap from the shops as I'm showing here. So try different sandwich bags. If you're using the whole sandwich bag as it is, then that Ziploc one is good. But if you're going to be melting them and making them any size like me, oh, no, I've done something to that corner. Do you know, I go to film and this happens. I made that one, honestly, first go, it's been perfect. <laughs> I do this example and uh, I'm getting this. Now I know with the water there, I might be getting little bubbles, but try and try again is what I say. I'm just going to leave that there for a second. It might be that I didn't let it cool enough because obviously I'm going over some wet areas where that liquid's got in. So let's go back down here. See the liquid just naturally starts to come away and push the rest of it down there. So this is me being frugal. I just don't want to go and buy anything too expensive. I want to make it work with, with this. So I'm just going to go along again. Again, I'm going to let that cool. Okay, I've done it. <laughs> I promise you it does work. I think I just may have missed some areas. And if you're going over it and you hear it sizzle, it's hitting the water, which is maybe causing an air bubble and it's just not sealing it instantly. But what I've also done is on this one here, if I bring it up, that corner is probably best to show. I went across on an angle rather than going just to give it a clean like right angle. I went across here and that seems to give it, you see now on here, look, nothing's coming through and I'm squeezing it there. So that might be a better idea than there, you can see on that other corner. These, uh, this corner, no, that corner there is the original, and then that's the other one that I sealed, and you can see that. But then that's on a point, and it's perfect. So just have a play around, first of all. Get used to it, make, you know, do your pockets, and leave it for a while. That's my best advice, is if you're making your own DIY pockets, is give them a few days and some time, just to make sure that we get it exactly right, like that one is. <laughs> Okay, I've got some copy paper here because I just want to add a blue frame. So I'm just going to grab one of my alcohol markers. I'm hoping it's not going to bleed through this too much because I'm just going to do a quick line. I think I've just got away with it. I can always put another piece of paper underneath it if I want to. 
Okay, now that should go over, which it does perfectly, and give me that blue frame. Okay, and then that will be sandwiched in between. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to add foam adhesive on my frame. Okay, so I've got my clear, this is the dot and dab range, I really like this one. And this is the foam adhesive, so I'm just going to cover all four sides. So before I put the water pocket on top, I want to have some of this kind of green behind the water because you can see through so it looks like it's really on the bottom of the riverbed. So I'm going to just start arranging where I want some of these pieces. So I'm just going to have a few kind of coming in and these are going to be underneath. So they'll be a little bit, um, I guess a little bit faded, a little bit dull looking because they're going to have the water over it. So I don't need to have too many, but I just want to have some there. I want to keep some for the, the front because I want there to be a bit of texture. So I'm going to have that one, that one, I'll have that one, and that one on the other side because these are also going to be mixed in. So if I keep those, and then I can have these underneath from this side. So it's going to look, you know, I want it to be really full but at the same time I want you to be able to see that blue. Okay, so I'm going to go for those there, and I like the kind of amount that's coming in, so I'm just going to get these stuck down in that position. Okay, so just make sure that you don't go over the frame there, so you would have seen me just cut that all away. Next, I'm going to stick my piece down here, and you'll see now, see I get those like bubbles there, and it, it's coming up like it's more or white, like these areas are really highlighted in the monitor, but there's actually a lot of blue in this. Hopefully the pictures will pick it up more. And then I'm going to go and stick this down now with a piece of thin tape, and I want to overlap half of it onto the pouch and half of it onto my card. So again, it's a little bit fiddly, but it, this is all to make sure that you're just really sealing the edges of that pocket again. So really I'm just showing you the process because you can make this any size card, you know, anything you want really. And it's it's obviously a brilliant card for those underwater themes, which you know I love to make. I've made so many. Try and keep the pocket as flat as possible. I've got a little bit of a ripple there, but that could also kind of add to the look. So I'm going to leave it in there. I'm not going to start kind of messing around with it too much, but yeah, just try and keep it as taut as possible. And then I'm going to take the backing off because this is just going to be extra for the foam to stick to. So it doesn't matter that the foam is going to be sticky as well as this because it will probably won't line up with it perfectly anyway. So look how good it looks when the water goes to the bottom and moves like that. I love this. So fun. Okay, then I'm going to take the backing off of my frame. Okay, make sure you're happy that you've got an equal border because once this goes down, there is no going back. And that will just seal that pocket even more. Like so. so now if I bring it up, can you see? How cool is that? So I like that we've got that background detail. And now everything else is going to go on the front, including my lovely little sentiment here. So I added the three sentiments together. So you have have an, which is, let me just bring it in here. So you've got have an, you are, you've got utterly fabulous, and you've got day and birthday. So I put a few together so it says have an utterly fabulous birthday. And I thought that was going to be really nice. So once I've stuck everything down, that's going to stick on the top there. And I'll be using this tape here because, again, I'm sticking onto plastic. But you're now going to watch me. I'm going to put this on high speed and I'm going to start creating a really fun scene because I want these otters to kind of look nest like kind of nestled amongst the the seaweed, the vines, I'm not sure what it's really called, and then I've also got the fish here, which I'm going to kind of just have, again, kind of nestled in these pieces that are going to be going on the front.
there is my finished card so you can see the water moving around and it's really fun to touch. This is going to be a great one for children but adults as well because I've really enjoyed this and I would love to receive a card like this. It's just got a nice interactive feel about it and it looks lovely when it is upright because all that water does sit and it looks like that the, the otters are kind of sitting just on the water, kind of floating, enjoying their day and those fish are jumping out of the water. So either when it's flat or when it's in its kind of upright position, I think it is a really lovely card. So I'm so pleased this has all come together. Top tips for this if you're making your own little pouches are just leave them a few hours, a few days. Mine were a few weeks because I was cracking on with other things and then I remembered I had it hanging on my pegboard. So it prompted me to do the tutorial when I received this lovely stamp set. So yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you have, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell and I'll be back again tomorrow with another fun card tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye.